scribble notes, uh, scribble notes when I wrote these quotes. If I offend, pardon me, there's more of me to grow. Creative in my process, enjoy the show. The will is different when you recognize the different strokes. Different folks, same goals, we all want the most. So when we reach the top, we can enjoy the toast. The type of bread we get is fresh about the bakery. Told them don't play with me. With or without a degree, don't question my intensity. Bravery, similar to agencies that want to see you fall. So just pray for me and pray for me. Yeah, pray for me. Einstein with my energy. Welcome to the Scribble Notes podcast. How how are you doing today? Man, I'm doing good, bro. You know, just taking it things day by day, man. You know, being able to really get a breather after dropping a project, man. It's uh it's been quite a stress relief, man. I'm not even gonna lie, because it, it was kind of <laughs> for real. Like when I had to re-record all them songs, man, like you know, I could be kind of draining doing everything like the third time because you know the hard drive I crashed twice when I did it. So oh my god, you know, I thought I'd be done and ready to put it out, but then you know, when Trey told me that the final mix was almost done, but then he had crashed again, I was like, Oh man, how am I supposed to come back from this? So, you know, just taking a break from all that stuff and now that it's finally out, I just been able to breathe, man, for real. So that's Ooh. the best thing I can really why, ask for. Before we get too far in, why don't you introduce yourself to the listeners? Let them know who you are, um, what Word. you do, because I'm super excited to talk to you. Nah, for sure. Uh, my name is Charles Tyson. Uh, I'm an artist, beat maker, producer, and uh, uh, also a musician. So I play the drums, guitar, a little bit of the keys. I'm trying to master that. I uh, play the bass. Um, yeah, I, saw, also, I saw you post something about gu- the guitar. I saw that. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I play the guitar, yeah. Um, I also try to do a saxophone, too, from time to time. But, you know, I'm still trying to master that and shit like that. So it's cool we cuss a bit. I ain't know if we, yeah, if we yeah, cuss course, or not. Course, okay, course, okay, course. I'll just make it short. But, yeah, um, I also am a lyricist, uh, MC. I uh, rock with Trust Productions out of uh, Connecticut. So, you know, um, yeah, that's pretty much my background with music, man. I've been music inclined my whole life. Uh, really started rapping like my junior year of high school, kind of fell off of it, but then came back freshman year of college after not making a basketball team. So, um, yeah, that that seems to be like the typical rapper story for some reason. But, you know, that's the route that God chose, uh, chose for me. So, you know, that's the best thing I could really ask for. <laughs> So, so since you've been since you've been rapping and mute and doing music for so long, what uh, what has been the most interesting piece of doing this? not just as a hobby, but as something you really care about? I would say the reception at shows has been like the most interesting thing because I um I, I first started doing like YouTube beats, but when I really started getting my own sound together with my own beats and stuff like that, I didn't know how people would receive it when I perform it. So, you know, when people actually chant the stuff back that I tell them to chant and when they actually putting their hands up, like, yo, the call and response, the reception, man, I just love it, man. And I'm just glad that people really receive it well because people are starting to hear a difference, which is good. So I think that's like been one of the most interesting things about it. And just honestly experimenting, man, you know, as an artist, you get to a certain point where you don't know what you want to create after a while because it's easy to get influenced by everything else that's out, but you also try to challenge yourself to stay, you know, the best original artist that you can be. So I think that's one of the interesting things also that I'm going through right now with doing music. Yeah, that, that's actually a really interesting point because I found myself, I write um, fantasy books. And mm-hmm. as I'm listening to, as I'm reading other people's books, as I'm listening to audio books or how other people write, you do kind of find yourself like, oh, I like that. Or I, right. I like, that's cool. And all of a sudden it's changing your process or changing your right. mind on things. So right. you're like always evolving as you take in more. Right. And like, I'm literally going through that right now. Like as we speak, like I was just working on a beat before the interview and, uh, I feel like it don't sound like my stuff, but then again, it does kind of sound like my stuff. But then again, sometimes I got to ask people for feedback. Like, how does this sound? So that way it don't make it seem like I'm trying to be like anybody else. So, yeah, it, it's kind of tough. But, you know, that's the that's the beauty of it, man. The more that you go through it, the more you're going to realize what really works out for you. So, you know, I just try to do what's best for me at the end of the day. How do you um? how do you, everyone's different, but how do you find that unique sound or how did you find your sound? Uh, I know it's been it's so interesting to listen to artists as they like kind of hone in on what right. they are, because it is that there's that whole process of trying this or trying that and right. seeing what works and what doesn't. How did you find yours? I s- well, I started off with playing in church as a kid. So, you know, I was playing the drum stuff. So I've always been heavy on the beats, but I always noticed that the patterns I like to play we're not typical. It's always something like different to them. So 
the more I did that, I started just doing that on like the NPCs and like the keyboards, you know, they call it MIDI keyboard, stuff like that. But I started doing it on that. And then like the elements, I probably say like the influence really came from like the West Coast at times because they got like heavy bass in their stuff. So I like to throw a lot of bass on my records. And, you know, I, one day I was just like, man, let's try it out. Let's see if I can really make a structure for one of the songs I already written to. You feel me? Like I said, the beats was already off of YouTube, but I want to take that challenge to make everything original because I did say when I want to drop a project, I wanted everything custom made. I didn't want nothing off of YouTube. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because yeah, on the sure. business side, you know what's coming back to you. You know, usually a lot of people don't understand when it comes to like doing YouTube beats. If it blows up, you got to like you got to literally repay for everything. So to repay for the whole full stems and everything. So I didn't want to go through that process. So um, I think really just really just not being afraid to try it out. That's how I really found my sound, man. You know, a lot of people, they get discouraged when something ain't sounding good or, you know, you got to really go through that process in order to really figure it out. So that's it, it's just interesting, man. Like, I, I look back to where I sounded now. No, what I sound like now to what I sounded from back then, I could really hear the improvement. So, yeah, um, yeah you, like I said, you just got to go through that process, man. And you'll find yourself eventually. So... Yeah, it's honing. It's it's like honing your craft, right? Like, yeah, yeah. So many people think that it's like it's gonna happen overnight, or it's gonna be yeah. easy. I think that's one of the things that I've learned as a creator myself. Like, it's not easy in the beginning at all. Nah, it's like, not. It's it, not. It can look easy, right? Like from the outside looking in, it's like ah, you just do this and that. You know, people freestyle and fool around, mm -hmm. and then they they every freestyle person thinks they're a rapper now. Right, right, right. <laughs> then, then you're you're over here making a full project. You're like, yo, <laughs> yeah, a whole yo. World. And it's crazy because a lot of people, like, I know when I, I didn't know if it was gonna come out. I'm gonna be honest because I mean, like I said, many times it crashed. I kind of got discouraged, but you know, I was like, nah, maybe the third time is the charm. So you know, I had hit up Trey, my boy Dante, uh, my boy Vi, my boy H Bomb, my guy Sinis, uh JC, who was also on the album. Um, my sister Latrice was also doing some vocals and stuff like that. I had everybody up and I was just like, listen, like, we got to do this one more time because, if, you know, if the thing crash, I really want to get this project out. I've been so patient with it, trying to make sure everything is done right. But, you know, it, it was so frustrating. Sometimes you got to go through that to really understand, like, if you're really built for this, because there's going to be so many obstacles in your way when you're doing something. You know, and, and when you're really trying to make a name for yourself, man, you're going to have a unique story that a lot of people could relate to, but a lot of people don't go through. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, my biggest thing is just always staying persistent with it. And, and, and that's how you really will get to where you want to be, man. And, and that creativity, man, just let the creativity lead, man, because there's been times when I try to force the sound and I'll be like, nah, this just ain't it, bro. Like. I can't present this to nobody. Like I got to make sure this joint sound right. So sometimes it'll take me days, maybe weeks to a month to make sure that a beat sound good or a whole song sound good. So, you know, don't be afraid to take your time with the process. You know, that's something I also learned doing this. So, you know, and I know you could definitely relate with that because, you know, even with the background, you see what I'm saying? Like, I know that didn't come overnight. You see what I'm saying? Like, that took time. Like, oh, man, I got to figure out how to really get people attention. You know, and I, I understand exactly where you was at, bro. And I know you understand the same thing with my situation. So yeah. that's the beauty of it, for real. It, it, it's crazy because there's so many elements that go into creating. Right. Um, for anyone that's listening, right? Like, there's so many elements to the creative process that you have to, all these boxes you have to check. And right. If you try to skip any of them, it's so it ain't the gonna sound pro right. <laughs> yeah, the end it product, ain't gonna sound just, right. it's just not going to sound right. It's not going to look right. It's right. not going to be received well. And then you're going to wonder why. So part of that is like you have to be very diligent in the process. Mm -hmm. You have to take right. your time. You have to accept that. Like how you just said, it could take days. It could take weeks. It could take a month before mm -hmm. you have the beat and the sound that you want that right. really aligns with all the things you're looking for. And right. someone might hear the three minute or four minute song and be like, ah, that's all right. And you're yeah. like. But it took so much energy. It took so much energy. It, it's, yeah. a, it's the same thing that happens to it. Just I feel like creatives all over have the same issue where you oh, yeah, put definitely. all that investment in, and sometimes it gets glossed over. But then you don't realize that it's all about touching one or two, three people, and some people are really gonna resonate with it. And when they Man, do, they ain't nothing it's like crazy. That. It's crazy because like even with songs that I put out from back then to now, like I hear. Dang, I could have fixed that. Why the heck I didn't 
listen to that and then try to really tweak it before I put it out. But at that time, it sounded good. But the better that you get with stuff, you're really going to hear those improvements that could have been made with the older stuff. So, you know, you just take it and learn with it, man, and really just be like, all right, next time I know what I got to do, you know, because everything with creativity is a learning process at the end of the day. And like with the songs that took months, not everybody's going to like it. You know, like one of the pro- um, one of the songs on my project, I can't remember which one it was. It probably was, I'll say Trials and Tribulations was one of those records. I really had to figure it out because it was just such a different tone to the beat. And it really brought me back to a time when I was really going through something with my trial and tribulations. But that record took a minute to write. I'm not even going to lie. Like it took a while. And then even Trey with his verse, it took him a minute to even get that joint. But I didn't rush him or nothing because I know when it came out, it was going to be solid. And like another thing I did learn about doing music, when you put stuff out, make sure the quality's right. And, and whoever don't agree, you got to really decipher who's really a hater and who's really like try to make you help improve your career. You see what I'm saying? So it's like certain people be like, nah, I hate that shit. All right, don't worry about that. But if somebody's like literally giving you criticism, like, yo, I feel like you could have turned this down, you know, just a little bit, but the song is solid, but there's some improvements. That's the type of feedback you want when you're doing something. Cause it's honest. You feel me? You can't have a whole bunch of yes men around you when you're doing stuff. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah everyone, man. everyone agreeing. <laughs> yeah. Like something wrong if everybody agrees. That's yeah. how I look at it, you know, because there's been plenty of records where I showed my boy Jay. He told me, man, I feel like it's dope, but I don't think nobody wants to hear this type of stuff or nobody wants to hear that because you're bringing light to certain people. And, and he'll give me like a whole explanation as to why he feel like I should change the song around. But mm-hmm. he always tells me like, yo, at the end of the day, you're going to do what you feel. So if you feel like you want to put it out that way, go ahead. You feel I'm not going to stop you, but just also think about from a listener standpoint. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's, it, it's just dope, man. Like, being around trust, too, man. Like, they allow me to be me every day. And, like, even when I was in Chicago and I sat out on the stage, man, like, I really meant that. Every word I say on that stage, I really mean. So, you know, without Trust Productions, man, you know, I wouldn't really be the artist that I am today. So mm. How how, it, how has it been to, to kind of work, work in a team, work in that kind of environment? What's that like? <laughs> Yo, honestly, it's dope. I'm going to be honest, man, because it's like, Everyone got their own agenda, but we move as one unit. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, Trey got the workaholic situation going on, and he's still a part of trust, though. And whatever workaholics get is still under trust at the end of the day. So everybody's winning and everybody's eating. You see what I'm saying? Like, with me, I didn't really come up with, like, another brand yet. But if I do branch off with another brand, it's still going to be under trust. Kind of how, like, Rock Nation and Dreamville co-sign. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the end of the day, man, they, they allowed me to be me, like I said, and you know, we all come together and we share our ideas and we try to make sure that everybody product is like dead right. You see what I'm saying? And like at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of artists, they want to sign the labels and shit like that. But all you really need is good people around you with the same uh, with the same focus, the same agenda. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's how things really go smoothly, because if everybody's on one accord, man, like you ain't going to really have no issues. Y'all going to bump into issues together. You feel me? And, and yeah, everything is not going to be perfect. Y'all may disagree about stuff, but that's the pure, genuine way to do things. You see what I'm saying? That's how you really elevate in this game. So, yeah, like I said, I always shout out trust everywhere I go. That's why I would have chain, you know, and, and when I'm out in Houston now moving around, people ask me, yo, what's that TR on your uh, on your chain? I'll be like, man, that's Trust Productions, man. Make sure y'all get with the movement. So, mm. you know, I put the squad on no matter where I'm at. So, you know. Now that's awesome because it, it it is interesting. I think hearing different artists and different musicians because it almost feels like it has to be a competition. Right. I feel like there's there's this mindset sometimes with with creatives. I was talking to one of my friends. He's a photographer, and he mm-hmm. was saying how like people. It feels like sometimes people are jumping over each other for opportunities, mm-hmm. um, opposed to just moving together and being proud and happy and excited for someone else, someone else's right. success. Um, I know I've noticed the I'm I'm in the author community, so I see a lot of independent publishing authors. Uh, we've kind of built this this kind of world where everyone's excited for everyone's right. Release. Everyone's excited for everyone's success. If I can help you, then I'm gonna do whatever I can. If I can repost or share something, if right. I can vote for something, I'm gonna do it. Whatever it right. takes to kind of see everyone like the rising tide lifts all boats. I want to see everyone be successful. So it's cool to hear 
at that kind of environment you're in because Absolutely. I've heard I've heard music is a little hard sometimes with that. It is, man. It could be because like once you mentioned the opportunities, man, like people see stuff for themselves rather than a team sometimes like me. I'm like one of the most greatest team players you could ever have. Cause it's crazy. Cause like for real, like, Curry out here. like real talk, if my nigga Trey got an opportunity, I'm happy for my nigga, man. Like if Dante got an opportunity for a show and he opened it up for like Benny the Butcher or J. Cole or somebody like that, go ahead, bro. That's you, man. At the end of the day, you being on that stage is a big one for all of us. Even if they don't see my face, you see what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, you really can't be selfish. Cause that's how y'all all thrive together. The moment somebody's selfish and they end it for themselves, the whole circle breaks, man. You know, and, and like my boy Jay said, if it ain't about trust, it ain't about us. You see what I'm saying? So mm. at the end of the day, that's how we really move, man. We, we really genuinely happy for each other. And, and I want to see my brothers thrive the best way that they can. You feel me? So Yeah, that that that's that's just dope to hear. It's like it, it's so cool to, to know that there is that there's that group, that community, that that joint effort as far as seeing success, because. We both know it takes it, it. It doesn't exist yeah, everywhere. <laughs> it doesn't, man. And like I had to go through some situations to really understand that, man. Like, you know, growing up in New Haven, when I told my brother at the time that I really wanted to rap and take it serious, because this is my freshman year at college. I'll never forget it. Um, he was on the phone. He like, yo, you sure you ready for this? Like, you sure you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a summer night because I just came home from school like not too long ago. Um, he like, yo, get dressed. We're going to the studio, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, all right, bet. Well, let me get some rhymes ready. You know, I wasn't making beats at the time. So all I was doing was really writing. Um, I go in the studio and, uh, you know, the people I have on a meeting and stuff like that, you know, I'm not going to say their names stuff because the story's old, but it taught me a lot. Um, they're like, hey, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, enough about me. What's up, man? What you doing in here? You know, tell us what you like to do and stuff like that. So I told them I want to rap and all this other stuff. She was like, all right, bet. Well, you know, go ahead and rap. Spit out acapella, freestyle, whatever you feel. So. I started spitting something like this. I was like, I was made in America, shooting like a star. I'm a good man at the heart. My grandma called me Pete. I reached my peak. And then I can't remember what I said after that. But I was flowing for a little bit. And then they cut me off. So usually let people finish and then get criticism. Nah, nah, man. That shit wasn't right. Blah, blah, blah. Wrap it over again. I ain't feel that shit. So I'm like, okay, okay. Let me try it again. I'm a fighter for some reason. I always fight with shit. Like, I go against the grain sometimes, especially with this music. I go against the grain so much, it's crazy. So I rap the same shit again for a reason. Here go the lady. What are you even talking about? Like, I, I can't understand what you're saying. And then the dude was like, you want to hear a real rapper? This is what a real rapper sound like. Yo, show him something. The dude just, in the teeth, in the teeth, in the teeth. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, all right, at this point, y'all disrespectful. Yeah. Y'all disrespectful and ignorant. Now, what's crazy about that night, too, you know, after the disagreement and all that, you know, I'm in the studio with them and he plays some beats and I rap on them. And I ended up going to New York that night. And uh, I swear to goodness, like, it was another artist there. And uh, Fred the Godson had an opportunity for the dude. So we had met Fred the Godson that night, too, which is crazy as hell. So, you know, within that one night, I got disrespected. I met an artist in the industry. <laughs> Did a lot of traveling, like it was crazy, but it taught me a lot. Like, yo, you really need to find some real genuine people that really care mm -hmm. about your art. So when I got to trust, like I first met Trey at a football game because uh, our boy Andre was playing. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We call him Trey Hooks. But um, yep. yeah, he had a football Dre. game. So, oh yeah, you know Dre, so you know what I'm talking about. So uh, we had the game or whatever, because I had argued with my uh, my girl at the time. You see what I'm saying? So I wasn't sure I was gonna pull up that day, but I apologized to her. You know, I drove down there. We linked up and stuff. So me and Trey's just talking. You know, we're not even, oh, yeah, I'm better than you. Nah, we really just chatting about real life and music and stuff like that. And then this lady out of nowhere, she just, oh, you guys talking about music, blah, blah, blah. And me and Trey just like, yo, like, who told you to interrupt? You see what I'm saying? So from that point, I know me and Trey was on the same wavelength. Like, we was on the same mindset. So, like, the first studio session, man, like, we literally sat down and talked, bro. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like we didn't record nothing. Nah, we really talk business and we really just got to genuinely knowing each other. And then once JC heard my music, man, I had a session with JC like a few weeks later, maybe a month or two. And yeah, he was like, yo, you got something, man. Don't let nobody take that away from you. And from there, I knew like, yo, trust is where I want to be. They understand where I'm coming from. They know how to help me improve. They know how to really let me be me. 
and express how I feel on records, you know, mm. and of course they're going to get criticism, but it's criticism to help, you feel mm. me, and, and to really, grow. yeah, to grow and to take my career to the next level, so yeah, man, when it, <laughs> when it come to the stuff I was just talking about, man, you're going to go through stuff, just straight up, you're going to go through some trials and tribulations, and that's why I put that record on the album, because it's like, everyone goes through their trials and tribulations when they're building their masterpiece, you see yeah. what I'm saying, and like, when Jay was talking in the skits, and, you know, since was interrupting and stuff, I really want to paint that picture of you being somewhere that you really ain't want to be, but you want to do your passion, but you got to, mm. you know, make money to survive and pay bills and all that other stuff, but you can't really take care of it with your passion at the moment. You got to take this shit in steps. Because like you said, if it happened overnight, something ain't right. Mm-hmm. Something so, ain't right. Something ain't right. I was going to I was gonna ask about, um, so you got a, you got a project that just recently came out. You want to talk yeah. about it a little bit? What was the thought process behind it? What's the what's it about? So I called it the masterpiece, right? And like the way I came up with this concept, I was working at Macy's Warehouse at the time, and uh, I was miserable, bro, because we working on weekends. I'm with my bro, uh, T. God at the time, and the dude I was cool. His name Savon, but um, yeah, at that time I literally was just miserable, waking up early in the morning, like we on the weekends. Like, I just had a whole nother job I had to do, too. So on the weekends, we'll wake up at, like, 6 in the morning and then not leave till, like, 6 o'clock at night. And this is cold winter days. So it felt like prison, bro. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> we go in there, it's, sun, it's sundown. We come out, it's sundown. We only get an hour a day. Like, felt like, felt like uh, a bad song. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So I just wish I had somebody to really drop them gems. Because a lot of people that I was running into, I feel like they was really fronting about their feelings about how they really feel about the job. A lot of people was like, yeah, yeah, I really like this job, but are you really happy about working here? And I know you got to provide for your family and stuff, but let's be real. I know you want to do something in life that made you more happier than where you at now. So that's why I came up with the masterpiece. And to be honest, when the skits come on, that's like conversations with myself. Because in the third conversation, I bleeped out Jay's name for a reason because the guy was never real. That was just me talking to myself. You see what I'm saying? Like, you got to really find a way out this motherfucker, man. Like, you know, take the proper steps. Don't make the same mistakes that certain people make so you can actually do what you love and be happy with life. You see what I'm saying? And some people might want to work a nine to five and be happy with that. That's what they choose to make their masterpiece. Some people might want to be a doctor or a lawyer. That's that's what they choose for their masterpiece. You know, but I know what I want for mine. So that's why I got songs like Do It because after you get up in the morning, you know, you really got to figure out, all right, am I really going to, take this shit to the next level. Am I really going to dedicate my time and energy to make sure that this shit pop up? Uh, you got patience. With the process, you're going to have to be patient. You're going to go through days where you don't see no money. You're going to go through days where you're broke, um, trying to figure out how you're going to pay your rent. You're going to go through all that shit. You see what I'm saying? Car breaking down, you getting stressed out about that shit. You know, you got to stay composed. And then it hits that first conversation. And, you know, OG... Yeah, man, we are talking about fuck this job, man. I've been here 25 years, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I wanted the conversation to really open people's eyes because, you know, when we get a lot of gems from the OGs and the and the people that was way before us, sometimes us being in the younger generation, we don't listen. So I really want to paint that picture of me really listening to what he got to say, even if I'm confused. You see what I'm saying? He, he's still shedding light and setting insight on how to make it out in life and be happy with what you love to do. And then it gets to songs like... um committed so after you you know you're going through them little tough times you got to stay committed man you got to stay persistent with your goals and don't give up even if you don't think that it's going to happen you see what i'm saying because the lord gonna put you through tests for a reason you know i'm saying he's gonna put you through those trials and tribulations you feel what i'm saying so he want to see if you're really gonna follow your heart at times yeah, so that's why i put that out there yeah you gotta go after so that's why i put that out of the conversation part too and like your heart's a funny thing because it's like that could be anything. You could follow your heart with your goals. You could follow your heart with your girl. You could follow your heart with, you know, uh, a job that you really want to do. You see what I'm saying? Like, just follow your heart. Whatever you want to do with that shit, follow it. No matter what people say, people going to mm-hmm. criticize. Do what's best for you. And then it gets to a song where it's like poetry and emotion. So I'm talking about the ins and outs of going through relationship stuff and really trying to build with a woman because, you know, I feel like me, especially in the music, like, I want a girl that's really down with the process, who really mm-hmm. understands and see the growth. You see what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, when you make it, a lot of women only see money. Yeah. 
feel me? They don't really care about how you are as a person. They either want to get rich off you. They want to, you know, make you a father and then have you pay child support. Like, you know, and <laughs> vice versa for women yeah. with men. Like, you know, men see women that's famous and stuff like that. Oh, I'm going to get pregnant and skate out, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's a lot of hidden agendas with people. But, you mm. know, when you stay down one person to come up, man, that's really pure, man. And, and that's always what I wanted. But, you know, sometimes life don't set up that way. And <laughs> at this point, it just is what it is. So that's why when I go through poetry in motion, I'm trying to really build. But I put my feelings to the side. I, I was blinded because in true colors, the dude I was fucking with at the time, too, like that was in my circle. I had to cut him off because he showed his true colors. And the girl also showed her true colors. So they both mm-hmm. played me. You see what I'm saying? So now it gets to a point like you're really mad because you're trying to make your masterpiece happen, but you're losing people along the way. But that's going to happen in life. You feel me? Like, even when you grow from high school to college, how many friends you got that you really stayed down with high school? Not it's not that many. many. <laughs> not, it's not too, too many. many. You see what I'm saying? Even elementary school. Like, I know a lot of people from elementary school that I was cool with, but then got to high school, they faded off. And then I got to high school, college, and certain and people faded off. Yeah, but, you know, that's why your circle got to stay small and you got to really know who you're rocking with. See what I'm saying? And um, that's why I have mentioned reality because in situations like that, a lot of people don't know how to control their emotions. Like me, I could easily fault the dude. Me, I could easily cuss the girl out. You know, all those emotions, you really got to find a way to deal with that yeah. without destructing your masterpiece. You see what I'm saying? Like, because a lot of people, they do stuff and, and they end up going to jail. Now they can't even shoot for their goals because they got probation and they on house arrest. You see what I'm saying? Uh, People try to, I don't know, they try to find another way out, but that end up to self-harm, you see what I'm saying? Like, I want people yeah. to really deal with the reality of these situations the right way, you feel me? And that's why I say um, in certain lines, like, I'm an answer to God, but really, I murder your squad. It feel like the nine in my hand, banging like Dennis J.R., better off calling me Kane and Pan, I would make you a dog, having your fire like Richard Pryor, I'm making the call. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm. I'm really tight. But I, I started noticing numbers keep moving on up. Signed the Jefferson song. Ticket picks out of the frame. Add to the list of my law. Trending on news on the blog. Feel like I cruise with the mob to put a world like a hitman to be a Paul Barrow tomorrow. So mm. niggas could really get violent over this shit. You know, and that's not always the way. Because you end up physically hurt or you just end up in jail over some shit that you could have easily avoided. Yeah. So then I get to the second part, like, uh, why I kill a man? I don't do it. Why kill a nigga for the street credit and get ruined? Why kill him if I know it's something better than trying to cop a Beretta, get sentenced from four to five and then turn into 25? Mm. Trying to save you life for them years that you want to fight for the day you were living cool for the day it was feeling right and you thought about innocent, but your heart got the bitterness. Now you stand in front of a judge and the shackle is on your wrist. 23 and one, it would feel like my Macy ship. I could never take back the time like a Justin Clock. So I pick, just strive for my masterpiece. It's slipping up, got a grip, cause it's only taking one time like you fucking raw with a chick. Like it literally only takes mm. one time. And a lot of people don't really pay attention to them bars cause I'm spitting so fast. Yeah. But if you really break nah, down and it. listen to what I'm saying, you see what I'm saying? It's, like it's, it's crazy because if you think about it, right? And even just, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna stop real quick, but the, just yeah, even what you just said, right? Like it really does only take one mistake, one time, yeah, one, one time. action to to shift your entire masterpiece, like ruin Straight the up. whole thing. Like uh, up. as soon as I think of it, I think of it like art. Mm-hmm. It only takes one one mistake to, right. to ruin good art, right? Like right. one thing could be off and now it's done. And that's right. exactly what happens here in people's lives all the time. It's one mistake, one interaction, one missed opportunity, one whatever that is that really holds them back and yeah. you have to be diligent you have to be aware you can't let your emotions get the best of you it right. is like what you said like it's taking care of all those things like you got to mm-hmm. be able to go in knowing i can't be angry and react that way right i can't because if i do what happens to the rest right. of this like i could do that right now in this moment mm-hmm. right is that worth it and right i think that's a message that really is something that like that's got to be heard. Like that, mm-hmm. that's got to be heard. But that's dope. I appreciate that, man. I feel like that's one of my favorite songs of the project because that's like the middle point of me, really going through what I'm going through in life. And like anytime I really go through something crazy, and that's another thing about my music, it's self therapeutic for me and mm-hmm. for others. So like I could listen to one of my songs and actually get calmed down. Like okay, remember what's at stake. You feel me? Because 
Man, emotions is something, man. If you react off with emotions, there's no logic behind that. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? But it also takes time for you to go through shit and really understand how you're really going to deal with certain shit. So then it gets to a song called Peace of Mind. Like, I need my space. Like, I just need to get away. I just need to figure out if I need to go to the park. I need to go on a roller coaster. I need to go out to eat, you know, spend time with another girl or spend time with family. You know, because peace of mind is definitely needed in this lifetime, man. Like, even after dropping the album, I had to get a peace of mind. You feel me? Like, because yep. so much shit going on in life, man. Like, and it's a lot of pressure that we deal with on a day to day basis. Just being black alone, mm-hmm. you got to find a peace of mind. Because, like, every day I'm driving, sometimes I'll be like looking out for the cops. <laughs> Yo, I was saying? here earlier. I, was here. I came back from the gym looking out for the cops. Like, what you is going you. on? You cops, because sometimes you don't even be doing nothing legit. You don't be doing nothing. It be their attention that be wrong. You feel me? Yep. Oh, yeah, I'm going to just mess with this asshole just because. But all that, man, it's always good to find some sanity and spend mm-hmm. some time with yourself. You see what I'm saying? Because we be around stuff for too long. You're going to get irritated. So, you know, that's why after peace of mind, it breaks into conversation of uh, part three, because it's like I had jail bars. I, you feel me? I spoke on everything he spoke about, you know, and you really can't let nobody hold you back when you're building your masterpiece. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like a lot of people would tell you, yeah, I feel like this ain't going to work for you. Like even with this music, some of my family don't agree with what I do. And they say family's supposed to be, you know, everything. Yeah, the biggest supporters. The biggest supporters, but not everybody support. I got a vast majority of my family supporting now, but even back then when I first started doing my music, I swear to goodness, yo, my mom, (laughs) she was like, because she seen my brother try to do it too, so my mom wasn't really with the music at all. Mm Because, you know, the industry, they paid a funny picture about what's really going on, but that's people also looking out for your best interest, so... I never forget it. I was asleep and I woke up because I left my phone on my uh on my mom's dressing, right? <laughs> so the SoundCloud was open because I was recording shit on SoundCloud at the time when I had this shit. Uh it was don't ever play yourself freestyle, right? So that's the DJ Calibi. And I'm over here cussing up like every <laughs> left and right. My mama like, all oh, that cussing. You don't need to be doing this music, blah, blah, blah. So she going off. And I'm like, uh, whatever, mom. Like, you know. You're going to see sooner or later how I really do this. You see what I'm saying? And, like, I always love my mother for that because it really gave me a motive to understand, like, when you're putting out music, sometimes you got to watch what you say. Mm. So, you know, not every experience is a bad experience. Every experience could be a learning experience. You mm. see what I'm saying? And, and you can really grow from it. So that's why now I noticed over the years I started cursing less and less. And I got a cursing problem. I'm not going to lie. Like, even outside of work, I be cussing up a storm sometimes. But that's something I got to work on. I, you know, I yeah. ain't perfect. Nobody is. Yeah, no, but, no, um, yeah I, I really try to understand, like, you know, there's kids listening. There's, um, yeah, there's all type of people. You could draw any crowd you want. You feel me? When it comes to this music, because it's like a kid can listen to it and start dancing. Once they start dancing, you know you got them. But mm-hmm. I know sometimes my music isn't kid friendly because of the stuff I talk about. Yeah. I'm so conscious and so lyrical sometimes. I got to find a way to, you know, balance it out. So, you know, that's why also peace of mind is a real hype. It's a real hype tone, you know, and that's another thing about this project. I wanted to really paint those emotions with the beats and the production, you know, mm-hmm. and I wanted to bring you through a little wave. Like, yo, I really felt every song. I felt good about doing, but I felt patience is really what I, really what I needed to hear. Mm-hmm. I felt like trial and tribulation really made me feel angry at the time, but I conquered it once I heard part two. So, you know, the beat speak volumes and so does your lyrics. And um, once I got to uh, Legendary, because after that third conversation, man, it's like, all right, you really want to make sure that you doing this shit for a reason. You feel me? And Legendary doesn't always mean statistics. You feel me? It could also just mean impact. You see what I'm saying? Like, a doctor could be legendary because he saved so many lives. He impacted people's lives for the better. Yo, this doctor right here, man, he cured cancer. Like, that's a legendary doctor. A legendary dentist. How many teeth did you fix? How many, mm. uh, so you see what I'm saying? Any yeah. career path you got, you can be legendary. It just doesn't mean basketball, football, baseball, you know. It's, it's average people that's legendary every day, but we just don't even mm. hear about them because, you know, they don't got no media on them. But in yeah. reality, like I said, man, with this thing, even if my stats ain't there, the impact that I made at my shows, that's some legendary feels right there. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'll take that. You yeah. know what I mean? 
And I don't really want to be famous. You know, the recognition is all I really care about. Because when people famous, they start really changing up their ways and changing up their people. And it poisons their minds sometimes. And I really don't want that. Mm. You know, and the recognition, you know, I'm still able to be me. I'm still able to move low. You know, but a lot of people know what I do. But, I mean, if it did lead to the fame, then I already know how I got to maneuver. Like, I'll maneuver like a Kendrick or Cole because you hear from them once they want you to hear from them. You yeah. see what I'm saying? And um, that's why Legendary, I made that record, man, and it made me really hype. And it keeps me motivated, like, yo, keep pushing, keep going. You know, and I speak on the basic shit that people want to shoot for, like, you know, double XL and um, Grammys and all that yeah. other stuff. But that's not what's important, man your impact, how you are as a person. That all, that all speaks volumes to people, man. You yeah, see what I'm saying? And with people. Interactions. And speaking of interaction, which is crazy, sometimes when we grind it so much, we lose sight of how it affects other people around us. Because I went through that too. Yo, this dude's always in the studio. He always mm. grinding, blah, blah, blah. So that's why, like, after the, uh, like, well, after the verses and hooks got done, you know, in that outro, I'm just spazzing out because it's like, I'm just trying to grind, man. I, I got a purpose that I'm shooting for. So I don't got time to link. I don't got time to, you know, uh, go to the movies and do all this other stuff. I got to focus. But we only get one life. So why mm. not balance your time right? Always grind. Always keep that in the back of your mind. Y'all got to get this shit done. But don't be afraid to sometimes kick it in create new experiences by going out, going out to eat with the fam or going out with a chick. We need that, especially yeah. me. Like if I stay in the studio <laughs> all day, after a while, I'm going to really get uninspired. <laughs> yeah, I I'm mean, gonna... yeah, I, I heard uh, one of the best things I ever heard from a creative person, like an author, they said mm -hmm. like, if you if you are hitting a point of writer's block, right? If you don't know what you're going to talk about or whatever, you got to go live. You got to go They're live. Like, part of the problem that people have, they'll grind, they'll, they'll put all this work in and then they lose sight of what the world is like. Right and, right, and you know, the world change all the time. Like, all the time. What happened, what's hot this year was not hot last year. Like, right, right. Everything, everything, everything changes. So you have to be, you have to let yourself get back out of there into the world and see what's changed, see what's new, make observations, because those things then influence your music. They'll influence right. the things you're thinking about. They'll change the way you kind of see uh see everything and it give, it's right. a hard it's a nice reset so i definitely agree like yeah i'm i'm i'm, de I'm known for grinding i'm known right, for putting right. in long hours right Absolutely. now I'm, I'm writing my third book finishing Word. my third book and i was like i've set the deadline it's gonna be march i'm finishing right. the writing process in march but right. i know i'm grinding every single day every Absolutely. Single, four thousand words on the paper like that's just what i gotta do right. but people around me know i'm grinding people now know i'm working but they also know that if they need me, I'm going to make time because right. as much as I can have this deadline in mind, I also recognize how we live uh, we live a finite existence, right? Like any any time, any moment, someone could be gone. So you right. have to be aware of that, too. I think right. anyone that's anyone that's into anyone that's grinding, anyone that's going after it, take that into account. Take that into mind. Absolutely. Like life ain't life ain't forever. So it's you not. got a chance to connect with somebody or like you said, like even just spend some time with people like that can go so much further than yeah. just another night where you are putting in more work. Know the right. balance, obviously know the balance. Right, <laughs> right. Sometimes we make that as an excuse to YOLO, right? Like, right, right, right. Like, I can't, yeah, like I, I can't go every night, but I could do this night for I can sure. Do this so night for yeah. sure. You know, but that's the thing about it. But people understand what you do. They going as long as you pulling for them too. They gonna pull for you every mm. time. And like with me, I'm not gonna front. I have a tough time answering the phone sometimes because I be I be moving around. Then like on top of work, on top of this, and then on top of trying to get stuff done in the studio. I'm a real busy dude. But I gotten better with picking up the phone and you know, yeah, let's go out and do something. Man, it does something for me because. I actually enjoy spending time with my family, especially when we go out to the hookah lounge or, you know, we go bowling or something like, you yep. know, that, that brings peace of mind to me. And, and that's why all these topics on the album, everyone could relate to. Cause mm -hmm. that's why that song is uh, called Don't Take It Personal. And I got my grandfather and grandmother in the intro. And it's funny about my grandfather too, yo, he called me, he was like, uh, hey son, you know, blah, 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 blah. Hey, what's up pop? You know, we chatting up for a little bit and then, Next thing you know, I could hear it in his voice. Something was wrong. He was like, uh, well, son, uh, 
I'm all right, but I'm not all right. You know, I'm like, what's wrong, Pop? Well, I listened to your music and I didn't like it, blah, blah, blah. But it's okay. I know how my grandfather is. He likes mm. a certain kind of music and we grew up in church like that. But that's not going to stop me from shooting for my goals. But however, I will let him express how he feels about stuff. And that's what you want people to do. You want them to yeah. really be honest about what's really on their mind. I'd rather somebody express what's on their mind than a sugar coat. It's yeah. going to help me in the long run. You know, and it feels good to me that people are able to vent to me and I don't really take shit too personal. So, you know, um, but don't take it personal too. a funny story in college. I started grinding, 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 partying, partying, all that other stuff. So I'm trying to get the balance right. But I never knew this. So Tank God, uh, he makes the beat. Well, he made a beat for Post Malone and 21 Savage called Rockstar. Mm. So me and him was in the same like uh, class in uh, college, which is wild as hell. That's so crazy. <laughs> I end up, for real, I end up dropping out, right? Because I flunked out and I had to go community college the next year. He's literally like, uh, I think he literally dropped out sophomore year. Bro, like, I kid you not, I look on his page and he got, he posted the art cover. So I'm like, wait, he just made a beat for Post Malone and 20 more Savage? That's but that's wild. why I mentioned that in that song because it's like, Anything can happen. Just look at Tank with his beats. Yo, mm. you put in the right amount of time, you put in the right amount of hours, you connect yourself and network with the right people. Yo, the Lord gonna put you in the right positions to, you know, to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To thrive. Yeah. So that's that's the biggest thing with that. And, you know, and that's why I also, you know, it was kind of like a, a, a vulnerable song too, because I'm telling how much I love my family and stuff like that, you know. Mm. Even if I'm irritated, I still got love for y'all. You feel me? Like, I just want to make sure I get the stuff done, but I got to do better with, you know, spending time with myself and spending time with my people. Because like you said, life is short, man. You know, you only get one life and, you know, enjoy it the best way you could. You may not always be rich. You may not have the most money, but the simplest things, a car talk, you know, going out to the park and, and throwing rocks in the water or, you know, just something like that. Yeah. Really make you really appreciate life a lot more, man. And um, that's why, and I also ended the song uh, ended the album with the song called Faith uh, featuring Latrice Hall. She's also on uh, Poetry in Motion and Your Heart Interview, by the way. So um, that song, I just really want people to really get motivated, you know, and, and understand, like, when it comes to your goals and when it comes to building your masterpiece, if a baby can say, amen, Jesus, Jesus got faith in God, you can also have faith in God with your goals and your aspirations. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, like, Regardless of what people say, just keep shooting, man. Because like I said before, you're going to always go through something. Because when you make it, you're really going to appreciate where you came from. You're really going to appreciate where you at. And like even now, like I appreciate everyone that's been supporting since day one. Like mm -hmm. I got a, a fan. She my homegirl, though. Like she homie. Like, like I can't even call her a fan. She's been loyal <laughs> since day one since she heard my shit. On SoundCloud to the streaming platform. Mm -hmm. Like that's loyalty. Fact. You can't play like you really can't pay for that when you're doing this music. If somebody not rocking with you after a while, they just gonna stop listening. But this girl listen um a lot. Her name India. She from Florida. I got another listener. Uh, after the show in Bristol with Trust, uh, we was at Bleachers Bar, and my guy James he uh came up to me. Yo man, you real dope. Blah blah blah. Can I get a picture? Him and uh, his cousin. Uh, his name Mr. Six though. Um, that's the first time I really took a picture with somebody like that. I didn't even know, but you know, the fact that they was appreciating the show and the performance I gave, he was like, yo, can I get your number? I was like, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I had James up from time to time. He'll hit me up, always give me encouraging words. Um, who else? I, I got so many people I can name, man. I don't want nobody to get offended if I forget. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's, no, just, that, it's all, that's awesome though, because yeah. it, like I, I've definitely, I've definitely found myself, right? When I published my first book, I had somebody uh, give, give a review and he loved the book. Right. And then he, he read the second one, loved it. And he ended up becoming one of the people who, like, for me, like, mm -hmm. I'm always going to remember him specifically, uh, Drew, book, Drew Book's reviews. Mm -hmm. He's awesome because he, he definitely gave me a chance. He made content for me. Uh, right. He made a whole, vi he made video just about, like, my book and talking about it. And I was like, that's so beyond like the call of action like a lot mm -hmm. of people didn't do that and the craziest part was i had reached out to maybe a hundred or so people not nothing no response right. people 
reading the message, not saying anything bad, right. not re- not responding to the emails, all the stuff, right? Like mm-hmm. as you're grinding, and then you get somebody that does, someone that is receptive, and then you find that they like that you're what you're doing, and that's even right. better because you you almost forget that that's part of it too. Like mm-hmm. having having a community, having people around you, and now I've been able to find a lot more people who read read my books and stuff and i'm like yo this is wild like i've right. moved, I've moved a ton of copies but i didn't realize that people actually were gonna like respond to it yeah, like, yeah. It's the same thing with the podcast it, it's like you start something uh that you that you're just enjoying and then you realize how other people might be enjoying it too and right. i've definitely had a lot of people who dm me sometimes and they're like yo that was a great episode and that stuff keeps you going like that's the encouragement right. that makes you realize like on those tough nights when you're just when you're just working. For me, when I'm just sitting there editing for hours, right. I'm right. like, dang, like, is this worth it? But then right. I re- then I remember, right? Like these pe- everyone around me, these people around me that actually do uh appreciate what I'm doing. And even those little those little taps on the shoulder are they go a long way when you it boosts when you- your faith, man. And that's <laughs> yeah. it boosts your faith for your masterpiece, man. Like I'm gonna do a continuation to this project because part two, I don't wanna give away too much. Nah, 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 don't give away two, too yeah. much. Yeah, part it's gonna be a whole elevation, but I think this is gonna be like if this was Weezy, how he got the uh, the Carter two, three, four. Mm. Uh, who else has a continuation of albums? Logic with his continue. It's gonna be something like that to where like I probably stop at three, maybe four, but I also got other projects I want to drop and shit like that too. Mm. But yeah, man, like that really boosts my faith, man, and like. Like you said, on them late nights where you feel like nothing ain't really happening, you know, you really uninspired. You think about the messages, man. You yep. just think about how many people counting on you, man, and, and who really got faith in your art. You feel me? And, and the craziest story, too, like, my pops is, like, one of my biggest supporters, man. Like, he legit from day one. Because I was afraid to tell him that I was doing music, like, rapping and shit like that. So I'm in the car. He like, homeboy. That was you on that song? And I'm like, yeah, probably. you like it? He's like, yeah. Why you ain't telling me you was rapping and stuff like that? But mm. another one, my Aunt Ronetta, man. Oh, man, I was afraid to tell. We all in church. So it's like, sometimes when you <laughs> in church, you don't want to tell people you doing stuff yeah. outside. You see what I'm saying? So she like, oh, you ain't telling me you was doing music. I would have been supported since day one. But always plug yourself. No matter where you mm-hmm. at, tell people. Yo, I do music, man. Like, it's crazy because even with these little cards right here, I, like this shit right here, I got the QR code and everything on it, right? Since I'm out in a new scene, I had to figure out a way to market myself and really try to get my name out there the best way I could. Them cards have gone a long way. Like, there's been an increase in my following because it's at my job. People would just leave it on a desk and, yo, who's this? Oh, yeah, it's my boy Chuck. He do music. You know, check him out, scan the QR code. I got people promoting for me, man. Like, it's just dope to see that when you really got people that really support you and really believe in you, man, they going to support you like it's a regular celebrity or something or mm-hmm. one of their favorite artists. You see what I'm saying? And they know you know the ride, you're not there, but once they see the vision, man, it's like they there with you. Yeah. You feel me? Like my people. They, from when, they believe, when they believe, when they believe, and I feel that's, that's the amazing feeling. Like it, it's crazy. And for anyone listening, that's like, that's why it's so important when you have people around you that are pursuing goals yeah. to, to be a part of it, to to encourage them. I know I have a friend, her name's uh, Melissa. She mm-hmm. has a podcast, a Dear Alyssa podcast. Dope podcast. I, I enjoy it. I think it's hilarious. She uh She's like, gives just raw conversation. And I remember when I first found out she was doing podcasts and I was like, oh, that's dope because I hadn't ever met her as a podcast. I, I, never, I didn't even consider that she would be doing it. And right. she stuck with it for months and months. And now I'm like, dang, like, you are a full-on podcaster. Like, I definitely got to connect with you. Had her right. on a podcast. Like, that, like, had to bring her on for an episode because you just realize that if you're not, if you're not supporting other people, how are you going to get supported? Right, right. I mean, it's all about reciprocation. Yeah. Kind of you gotta, you gotta be a part of that. And that's how it's so, so, that's why it's so important to keep connected with people. Right. Um, we're coming up on the end of our time, but I want to give you a chance to plug where people can find the album, where they can find you on social media and how to connect with you. Okay. Um, yeah. So the album, well, first my social media, you can follow me on all Instagram, Twitter, I don't know why I say all Instagram and Twitter, man, but all those, uh, all the social media platforms that it's Charles Tyson. Um, 
We also got Apple Music, Spotify. Uh, uh, damn, I can't think right now. Um, title, everything is on the mm. platform. So just type in Charles Tyson. That's my artist name. And uh, I just got to give you a shout out to everybody that's on the project, man, who stayed with me throughout the whole entire process, man. Shout out to JC, Chuck, Cheese, Sennis, VI, um, my boy Trey, my boy Dante, um, my boy, my cousin Terrell, because he actually did a bass song, Do It. Um, also, Dante, you know, did some musician stuff as well, like with the keys and stuff like that. Uh, Latrice, um, my boy Javon, my boy T God. Uh, my grandmother, my grandfather, my mom, my little god brother Mike. Um, hopefully, I ain't missing nobody. Uh, Sky, she was a, a part of the song. My friend Tati, um, she was also on a few songs, stuff like that. Um, she also did the, car, uh, the cover art as well with mm -hmm. my boy C Miles. They also collabed on that. Um, and I hope I ain't missed nobody, but if I did, y'all forgive me. H Bomb. I cannot forget H Bomb. He's also on reality. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been one of them days, man. So, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of the podcast, man. And I, I just uh, look forward to continue to build with you, man, for real. So, of course, of course. And my, my last question, uh, usually I, I like to ask the guest, uh, what's a piece of advice you have for somebody that wants to get into the music uh, industry when they're trying to make music? What's the What's a good piece of advice for them starting out? Someone that's brand new that's like, ah, you know what? I'm about to dip my toe. Hmm. What do I say? The biggest thing, be yourself. Don't be afraid to be yourself and go against the grain. You'll know it's a lot of shit start working out when you go against the grain because if you're trying to be like somebody else or be like people in the industry, you're going to end up just like them. You're not going to separate yourself. Hmm. Don't be afraid to do something different to separate. So that's the biggest thing I could say when it comes to advice. So. Thank you. Thank you for coming yeah, for sure. on the podcast. We definitely no appreciate doubt, bro. it. No uh, doubt, man. Appreciate it, man. It felt good to do one of these. I haven't done a podcast <laughs> or an interview in a while. So, you know, I'm just happy to be here, man, for real. Glad to have you on. And for the listeners, you already know what it is. Like the video, subscribe. Absolutely. Give us ratings. We need to get these ratings up uh, nah, on the for podcast. Sure. So definitely, definitely leave a rating. Uh, and you already know. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Peace. Peace. Scribble notes, uh, scribble notes when I wrote these quotes. If I offend, pardon me, there's more of me to grow. Creative in my process, enjoy the show. The will is different when you recognize the different strokes. Different folks, same goals, we all want the most. So when we reach the top, we can enjoy the toast. The type of bread we get is fresh about the bakery. Told them don't play with me. With or without a degree, don't question my intensity. Bravery, similar to agencies that want to see you fold. So just pray for me and pray for me. Yeah, pray for me. I ain't with my